I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. After an intense week of political warfare and battle of wits in the United States election, Donald Trump is sworn in as the 45th United States president. But what does that mean for Nigeria? That's our focus on the program. Many thanks for joining in, everyone. This is Politics Today Live on Channels Television. I'm Sheung Okimbalo. Indeed, history has been made today. Today, Americans and the world witnessed a change of power from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party. The nation has a new president, Donald J. Trump, who defeated Hillary Clinton at a post last year. Though it with less popular votes, but a higher electoral college vote, what does the Trump presidency mean for Nigeria, considering our relationship with the country. That's what we shall be dissecting in a moment. But let's tell you about some of the local stories that we are following for you right now. Donald J. Trump, 45th President of the United States. Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari, remember, visited the last President of the United States, the 45th President of the United States, Barack Obama, and there are a lot of relationship uh, and a lot of uh, understanding made with that country on issues of trade, economy, and security. The big question now is, uh, where does Nigeria stand in the Trump era? Now that Obama is gone, and all of the rhetorics which um, brought up uh, Donald Trump into power, will they remain? If they do, how will it affect Nigeria's relationship with the United States? And that's the perspective that we're going to give to you right here, right now on the program. Who has to discuss this matter? Uh, then uh, a man who is the chairman of the United States Nigeria uh, Relation Committee on. Uh, Nigeria-U.S. relation in the House of Representatives and the man who was behind the United States Congress, Congressional Nigerian Caucus in the United States, uh, Honorable Johnson Agboima E.J. Many thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Yeah, let's begin. Uh, you spent a lot of time in the United States. You uh, move very closely with uh, congressmen and women in the United States. You were even behind uh, the Congressional Nigerian Caucus, which you drafted and you were the brain behind it. If if you look at your relationship with that country and the rhetorics which brought Donald Trump into power and the present administration of Muhammad Buhari and what we heard from Donald Trump today, where does Nigeria stand? Well, thank you and thank you our viewers out there. I want to say that uh, uh, we, I don't want us to jump into a conclusion, just maybe uh, to say, oh, where do we go from here? Maybe people want to take it you know, the other negative ways and all that. But I want to be positive. I want to look at the whole issue as maybe this time around. Uh, Donald Trump, the president of the United States, today is the president. We put Nigeria in his agenda. And, of, of course, Nigeria is the most populous you know, country in Africa. And uh, like the former president, President Obama, I must say this, that uh, I was highly disappointed. Uh, a lot of Nigerians expected him to visit Nigeria at least once or twice, if possible. Because even uh, former President Bill Clinton visited Nigeria on various, various occasions. And George Bush, as a Republican, also visited Nigeria. But you, you are a black president, and we are all over the world. People were just, you know, clamoring to see, you know, President Obama, former President Obama, you know, succeed. But it never imparted in any way, or uh, it's because of corruption in Nigeria, which of course there's corruption all over the world. Even in America, there's corruption. Halliburton, Aaron, you know, uh, they did a lot of corrupt activities. You know, be proud to this time. But let, let, let me take it a little back, you know, that uh, I am looking at this, like he said, he wants to make America great again. Most of us were not. You know, among those who supported Donald Trump, I must say, without missing words, but he's the president now. He said, look, 
politicians promise you everything and give nothing in return. At the end of the day, they even apologize for doing nothing. So he's giving the you know, government for the people, of the people, and by the people. That he wants to give back the government back to the people. That he wants to make America great again. And, and people bought into it. Regardless of all the utterances, the negative campaign, in the history of America, this is my very, the very first time that I witnessed an election that never, you know, talk about issue, how to help the people. Rather, they were pouring insult, castigating each other. And today, uh, he's the president. The people have spoken. And I would say that, uh, unfortunately, you know, we used to say that uh, majority always win. Majority always have, you know, their ways. And why minority have their say. But today, today, it is different. It is politically incorrect. Today, you can see that majority just have their say. Minority just have their ways. Honorable. Why? Why am I saying this? Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. Why President Donald Trump got lesser vote? So the majority of Americans voted for Hillary Clinton because of the system of the Electoral College vote. President Donald Trump won. So the relationship between Nigeria and America, and I believe at the end of the day, the end will justify the means. I've spoken to a lot of my friends, those in, you know, Republican and Democrat. Uh, I'm not looking whether he's, you know, he's a Republican or Democrat. I've al always worked across the aisle. I'm not partisan. You know, I have a lot of good friends. Republican that have done a lot for me while I was in America. So I wouldn't say no because they are Republican. I'm not going to do, have anything to do with them. Because uh, on, on the flip side, at the Capitol where the inauguration went on, uh, outside uh, in some parts of Washington are protesters, uh, anti-Trump protesters on the street. And one will not cannot take away some of the rhetorics on the issue of throwing out uh, Muslims, not aligned uh, uh, Mexicans, uh, and building a wall, uh, the issues of African. In fact, Nigeria was part of the campaign rhetorics of Mr. Donald Trump. And one will wonder, uh, where does Nigeria take it from, uh, from that point? Uh, we, if we had a relationship with Barack Obama, and now Donald Trump is coming into power in terms of economy, in terms of assistance in security. Where do you think we're taking it, we should be taking it from? Let, let, let me tell you this. Maybe you don't have this information. Uh, I must say that, uh, yes, we might have a little wonderful relationship with former President Obama. I will tell you, not all that great. It wasn't all that great. You might be looking at it as a flurry. But I'm saying that uh, you'd be surprised that Donald Trump, my, you might be surprised to see that, look, he wants to have a wonderful relationship with Nigeria because Nigeria is a hub. They need Nigeria. But and Nigeria needs America. That he America said, needs Nigeria. With some of the things that he yes, said. Oh, he said that, campaign, but do you think he can Do you think he will have the time he, for a country like Nigeria in Africa? Don't say that whether he will have the time. If he does have interest, there are a lot of people today, like a friend of mine who is one of those that really campaigned, that took Donald Trump all over the United States in the black community, talking about all the churches, black churches. It will surprise you for you to know, that is Don King, that what he did for Donald Trump, Don King has so much interest. He told me, EJ, don't worry. Nigeria, I love Nigeria. So they said, even did there's something that, was, that surprised me, that I think you probably have a copy, where he said he did a song that I am in support of the war against corruption in Nigeria, that I am in support of President Buhari against corruption. So he did that, and then he worked very closely with uh, Donald, uh, Trump. Donald Trump. So he is saying, he said, don't worry. So there might be hope for Nigeria. Repair it, repair it. I'm telling you, I live in Houston. He was my governor for many years, and uh, I have a very close relationship with the former governor, you know, that is Texas, that is Governor Perry, one on one. And today, He's uh, the, the Secretary, Secretary of Energy. Energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you, I'll do my best. I was a lobbyist in the U.S. And, uh, hey, I know you got to dial up, move in, do what it takes to bring what is important to bear. Right. It is doable, it is achievable. 
But at the end of the day, but I also want to advise, yes, our foreign desk in Washington, D.C., they should do far better than what they right. did in the past. Well, you have been there, uh, and a man who has enormous power, such as that, and the fact that Nigeria is in recession, what do we need to get from America, for example, that we need to be talking to? Do you think President Buhari should pay uh, Donald Trump a visit in the coming days? Well, uh, if it is uh, possible, I think uh, Mr. President Buhari should do that. Uh, I think uh, I, I want to say this, my dear brother, you know, Sheo. When you're talking about the relationship, uh, like my friend in the Wisconsin said, oh, that the relationship uh, is good, there's probably going to be a problem. I don't see any problem. I I'm telling you. I would not see any problem for the simple reason. Like, we had Obama. What would we benefit? We had Bush as Republican. PEDFAR did a lot for Nigeria. HIV control, malaria control, tuberculosis. He, has, he did so much to impart. He had Nigeria's interest at heart as a Republican. Bill Clinton as a Democrat did excellently well. So when I said to someone, I said, the first black president that ever ruled America is President Bill Clinton, not even Obama. Obama didn't do anything for Nigeria. Honorable uh, Obama, uh, as we close now, let's bring the issues home. Uh, you are a, uh, heading the, the Committee on Nigeria-U.S. Relations. What will the House of Reps, the Nigeria uh, National Assembly, be doing right now? What, should we be having friends with the United States or China? Or what do you think we should be doing with the United States? I, I want to appreciate uh, the Honorable Speaker, Speaker Yagubu Dugara, because of uh, his style of, you know, trying to do things. You know, we've traveled together to the United States. We met with some congressmen. What he did was how to partner with the U.S. Congress, and they agreed to partner with us. What we are talking about is that, look at today, a lot of Nigerians' money, looted from is in America. I want to appeal to President, you know, Donald Trump, at least, if you say Nigeria is corrupt, the giver and the receiver are both guilty. If all we are asking for, all I'm saying, like about $550 million got forfeited just a few months ago, back to the United States, as a result of no one representing Nigeria's interest at the courthouse. So I want the $17 billion undeclared crude oil that is in America, that Mr. President should be able to have the interest of Nigeria, that money should be returned back. That is the reason why the United States Congress passed a resolution that the looted fund belonging to Nigeria in America should be returned back to Nigeria. It belongs to Nigeria. Corruption, if you are saying we are, that it's corrupt in Nigeria, mm. return Nigeria's money that is in America back to Nigeria first. Honorable E.J. Johnson, I want you, Many thanks for... Uh, talking to us on the program. Chairman, House Committee on Nigeria-U.S. Relations in the House of Representatives. Many thanks for being part of the show. And that's our show for tonight. Many thanks. I'm Sean Kimale. Thank you.